Hello folks and welcome to this new episode of my crazy um, um, mechanized Wehrmacht only campaign and as in the previous video I kept complaining about uh, that I needed more troops that the Eastern Front was lacking divisions to hold the front line and blah 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 um, the first thing that I did um, as soon as the new year 1942 um, began was to set into the training program of the Wehrmacht uh, 24 brand new um, infantry, or better say, motorized divisions. Um, just a small, small bracket here, I finally wiped out the Soviet bridgehead on the western side of the Dnieper River. And as I say, I was saying, um, I decided to, to train 24 m motorized divisions, let, let's call them like this, and three. I think there were three, pan, three or four panzers, panzer divisions and three um, Waffen SS divisions. And well, when, when I put those divisions, those men, under training, um, I realized one thing that I completely disregarded in the previous episode and uh, throughout the, the first six months of Operation Barbarossa. And this aspect where the tremendous losses that the, the Wehrmacht suffered in terms of not, not only manpower but um, equipment as well and because the, the Wehrmacht was now mainly made of motorized divisions uh, the most precious equipment that now I needed to produce were lorries and when I uh, scrolled down in, in the production screen how many lorries I needed to, 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 to produce to trade and also refill all the divisions on the front line um, I saw the staggering number of 43,000 um, that was like, okay, how do I do this? I mean, luckily I had already quite a significant amount of factories, military factories, um, pumping out lorries uh, for a grand total of 139 lorries per day. And just by doing some, you know, some calculations and math, uh, well, to be honest, I did use the lo logistical tab in the in Arsenal Power 4, I saw that I would have needed 303 days to just refill um, the lorry's pool, let's say. And as, as a funny coincidence, you know, it, it just ca came up to my mind the Sabaton song Fields of Verdun, you know, 303 days below the, um, the sun, three, three, three days below the sun, yeah. And I was like, okay, so um, I can either wait. I can either waste the whole 1942 year and just sitting there on the Eastern Front doing nothing on the defensive and just um, keep filling up my uh, my uh, lorries production or I would not I would have needed something else and I decided to go for the something else which was just to uh, put at least 50 military factories in uh, lorry production and Again, for the, for the first time, maybe you you may have not noticed that, but um, I decided to sacrifice the production of other military tools uh, to really prioritize uh, the syn not synthesis, synthesis, but the making of lorries. And I sacrificed um, fighters, level bombers, dive bombers, and also um, mechanized equipment, just to do one thing, just to pump out as many lorries as possible. And in, in the end, I would say this turned out to be quite good because already in March uh, 1942, the production uh, scale, scaled up to, I think it was already 160, and um, by the end of March, I somehow managed to um, uh, close the gap between the uh, required and the um, uh, produced uh, vehicles um, on the on the on Eastern Front. I was, uh, I mean, ha on Eastern Front, having, having decided to go on with the second approach, so not to to sit down and uh, and watch. I was like, okay, so as soon as I managed to um, refill most of the divisions uh, standing there, I could maybe launch an attack in the direction of the Caucasus. And this plan was, however, abandoned because, on one hand, the, 
the Red Army turned out to be a much tougher opponent in my ex expectations. Um, I, I never played Barbarossa before in the Total War mod and I, I was really um, stunned by the desperate attempts and the desperate counterattacks that the Soviet troops launched all along the line. And trust me guys, if you never experienced facing the, the Red Army during the, the, the winter counteroffensive of 1942, that's, it, it, it was really a pain in, in, in that place. And so again, this um, um, period again uh, caught me a bit, um, un, not unprepared, but um, I was really undecided because, okay, I wanted to, to, to launch the offensive, but on the other hand, on the other hand I really wanted to um, let the, the Red Army attack and exhaust itself against my formidable defensive lines. Um, my, 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 my plans changed when I um, had a look at, at Finland and I realized that Finland was about to capitulate. So I said, okay, I, I have no time to waste, I need to do something. And what I wanted to do um, was to, to launch a very local um, offensive, a local pincer movement, of course, yeah, you know me. And whose aim was just to basically trap all the Soviet divisions between um, Voronezh and Rostov. So before the, the big Don, uh, Don Bend, and in this, in, in let's say, with this local offensive, my aim was also to um, try to delay the capitulation of Finland because by, by looking how the Finnish troops were just falling back, I was like, okay, so Finland is doomed. So I quickly rushed all the Panzer divisions uh, and mechanized divisions that, that I had um, um, all on the front line and with Guderian's Panzer group from the south and um, von Kleist's Panzer group in the north, precisely on, I think it was on April, um, April the 1st, 1942, exactly, April 1st, uh, the offensive began. And again, the presence of mechanized troops, uh, more, um, Panzer divisions, supported by, I would say, thousands of, of airplanes between fighters and dive bombers simply annihilated every resistance. And as you can see right now, look at, at the northern wing, von Kleist panzers just met no opposition on the way to Voronezh. And that, that, that guys, was was really awesome. I, yeah, I really felt, ah, oh, I, again, I broke through the enemy lines and now nothing can stop me. And as you may have seen, the 9th Panzer Division occupied Voronezh on April the 11th. So, 11 days after the beginning of the offensive, Bronjes fell into German hands, and um, with the fall of Bronjes and the meeting of Bulgarians and Panzers, and von Kleist's Panzer groups, um, two pockets arose in the, in this um, region around Kharkov, and I think it was yeah Poltava, yeah exactly Poltava, um, which I mean they were not too big, too large pockets, but um, they helped in shrinking the size um, of the Red Army. And at, at, the, at, the, at this point I realized, okay, um, I just have, I do not have enough troops for um, further offensive because really the, the front line was now being stretched really, really badly. I, I did, I launched some minor uh, offensive to uh, um, wipe out those uh, very small salients on these south eastern part of the of the bulge and <clears throat> at this point since I I had I just could not advance even more I was like okay let's just finish off the the, the red army traps down there so the, the last phase of this local offensive was to seal off the Rostov gates by sending to the south um, Guderian Spanzer and at Ta Ta Tagnarog yes and this basically, um, yeah, that that was all what I wanted to show you in this episode. And yeah, before the beginning of the real Far Blau, I just wiped out the last uh, pocket. And 
yeah i think that's all for this episode uh guys thank you very much for watching take care and stay safe